Now I'm Paul Daddy from Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Today I'm cooking a brisket up Goldie style. But keep in mind that Goldie's doesn't use pellet smokers, but I'll be following their method as closely as I can based on the information that's available at the time of this cook using the resources that I have available to me. So who is Goldie's Barbecue? Well, they're a relatively new barbecue joint in Fort Worth, Texas. Now, they opened up in February 2020, and that was right before the COVID pandemic hit. But by October 2021, they were crowned the number one spot in the Texas monthly ranking of the best barbecue restaurants in the state of Texas. Now, this list is updated roughly every five years, so wearing that crown has a huge financial impact of any winner. It's really, really a big deal. Now, one of the owners of Goldie's is the front man, Johnny White. And Johnny also runs a YouTube channel called Jerby Barbecue. And Johnny's very generous in sharing information about Goldie's and about barbecuing in general. So if you're not already doing it, you should give Jerby a watch on YouTube. He's definitely not afraid to color outside the lines and he's openly challenged many of the traditional accepted barbecue practices. Now let's get into cooking this brisket. Now Goldie's uses choice grade briskets but at the time that I purchased this brisket, the only choice grades available where I was shopping were grass fed, and that's not what I had in mind. So for about the same price, I got a prime grade. Now this one weighs in at a little over 20 pounds, and that's a little bit larger than what Goldie's would normally cook. And like I said before, they don't use pellet smokers because they cook in a thousand gallon offset. Today I'm using a six inch Dexter Boney knife. And as usual, the first thing you do is open up the brisket, dry it off with paper towels, and then look it over just to see what you're working with. The first thing that jumps out here is that this brisket arrived with a very significant gash across the point, or the deckle end. Now, I'm kind of tempted to just round that off and cut that part out, but I decided to leave that part alone. This brisket's gonna be cooked for a family gathering, and I'll be traveling with it, so all that's being considered for this cook. As I'm trimming, keep in mind that most of my trimmings will be packaged, frozen, and then made into sausage or jerky at a later time. So almost none of this is gonna be wasted. I'm considering this a very moderate trim. The goal is to get that fat layer down to about a quarter inch and then do some reshaping to make the brisket as aerodynamic as feasible. And when you round off the two corners on the end of the flat, we want to take off any meat that's really, really thin because that could burn and not cook the same as the rest of them. So removing the edges on this flat will expose that lean, and then you can judge the thickness of both the meat and the fat layer. Now the flat on this brisket, that's the lean part. It's very, very thick. So we don't have to worry about being real aggressive when rounding it off. Now this brisket has a pretty large seam of fat but I really don't like digging it out, so it's just something that I generally deal with when I'm slicing it up, but I'll get back to that part later on in the video. And this is a backyard barbecue, and this is a backyard trim. Competition would be a whole lot different, and restaurants would probably do it a little differently. Now, like Goldie's, I'm using warm water as the binder. Warm water sets the fat up to receive the rub because it may slightly start some melting, and so it'll hold that rub just a little bit better. Today, like I said previously, I'm trying to cook this Goldie style. But keep in mind that some of their restaurant practices, they may be partially based on economic factors. The cost of doing something in a restaurant business has to be considered what effect will it have on the bottom line. So warm water might not be the best binder. It may be, I don't know. But it would probably be the cheapest. I may or may not be adopting this practice later on. Start with the meat side. and squirt on an even coat into that warm water. And one of the issues with using water is that it's a little more difficult to observe your work. But since you're using water, it should make an even coating anyway, cause it's thin, thin, thin. Now let's do a coating of the 211 rub. It's two parts black pepper, one part kosher salt, and one part Lowry seasoned salt. Now here's another slight deviation from Goldie's. They add the ingredients one at a time and in this order always. Start with black pepper, then kosher salt, and then the Lowry seasoned salt. Two parts black pepper, one part kosher salt, and one part Lowry seasoned salt. Now I've mixed this up in a 2-1-1 ratio. I put it in a shaker bottle, and you can also buy this stuff directly from Goldie's Premix. Doing it this way is acceptable, but keep in mind that if you don't keep it mixed up properly, that ratio can change on you after you do two or three briskets out of that bottle. So keep it mixed up all the time. 
And the reason I'm not doing the one ingredient thing at this time is because I just think it'd be more difficult to get the ratio right for us backyard cooks because we're not doing it every day. Now the guys and gals at Goldie's, they're doing a high volume of briskets weekly and they have it dialed in. Adding the rub is best done by holding that shaker very high, like eye level high. But here again, I had to adapt. The wind was blowing real hard straight toward me in my outdoor kitchen. So I had to hold it at a lower level. But ideally, you would hold it about eye level to get that good spread when you're applying the rub. Jeremy gives that meat side one light coating to rub. He says it's not all that important, but I kind of wonder if that's an economic decision, but you really can't question Goldie's success. But it would save them rub because they're doing such a high volume. Now turn that brisket over to the fat side, and this is the presentation side. Most Texas barbecue joints generally cook fat side up, but just so you know, Myron Mixon, who's got the title of the winningest man in barbecue, he cooks fat side down, but today it's fat side up for this project. We're making two passes of rub on the presentation side. The first pass with the rub is a lot lighter than the second pass. The second pass should be quite a bit heavier. And when you get through, you want to pick that brisket up, dump off the excess rub, and then press it in. The latest information that I have about Goldie's is if they stop seasoning the edges. Now they're in the business and from time to time they do make changes for economics, for workflow, or for efficiency. I really don't think that I've seasoned as much as Jerby does. I'm a little bit gun shy because this brisket cook is my first using this rub and it's for my family so I don't want to blow it. Also keep in mind that if you're not using a 1,000 gallon smoker and your smoker is a smaller pellet smoker, then you probably don't want to try to match temperatures with the big boys. 275 on a small smoker, that's a lot more harsh than it would be on that 1,000 gallon cooker. Why? because the brisket's just so close to the fire. Now I'm gonna be cooking on the top rack. I got drip pans underneath. It's easier to clean up. It's easier to film on the top rack. And on this particular smoker, I find this temperature can be more moderate than it is on the bottom rack. That's kind of odd, but that's the way it is. That may not be the case for your smoker, so your mileage may vary. I decided that since I'd probably be better off choosing my own temperatures, I'm starting up at 150 degrees and smoking at 150 degrees for the next two and a half hours. I'll be using the Yoder's internal probe to monitor the brisket temperature. And I'd like to hit that 202 degree Fahrenheit internal temperature and at that point it's considered cooked except for the rest period. Now after it's smoked at 150 for two and a half hours then I'm going to start working that temperature up. So I'm moving that set point up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after another 45 minutes, I'm gonna change my set point to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me go back to the 150 degree startup. I don't wanna get this too confusing, but I have recalibrated my probe to read 25 degrees higher than it actually is. The tail true thermometers that I have, they're both gonna be sitting on 150 degrees, even though I'm cooking with a set point of 175. The actual temperature will run 25 degrees lower than the set point. I'm cooking by the thermometer readings, not the smoker temperature. Cooking at 150 for startup, it produces more smoke than if we started at 225. Now the temperature recalibration means that I was cooking at 225 for most of this cook, even though my set point's higher. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having that brisket already on your pit when you start up. That way you can take advantage of the more abundant smoke. And this is especially true if we're using a pellet smoker. We need that smoke. Now it's non-conventional, but using the Goldie's method from start to wrap time, that smoker's going to remain closed. The brisket's not wrapped until it hits 202 degrees internal, and then it's wrapped for the resting period. That's it. Now it's my understanding that Goldie's Barbecue does not actually tempt their briskets. They go by fill, but you got to remember that in any given week, they're going to cook more briskets than most of us will cook in a year. So I think I could do it, but I'm not betting this brisket on that. And so I've got it probed and I have my thermal pin for a backup. And like many smokers, mine is equipped with Wi-Fi. As I said before, this brisket's gonna travel with me. And also what I haven't mentioned is for part of the cook, I'm gonna be 50 miles away attending one of my grandson's spring football game. So the pellet smoker allows me a very, very long leash. 
I just have to make sure that that pellet hopper's full before I leave for the game. So even while I'm sitting there watching the football game, I can still keep an eye on that cook by way of the app that comes with the smoker. I got back from that game in plenty of time. The Yoder YS1500, it did an excellent job letting me be an absentee pit master. I do not like to leave the cook unattended, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So just like that, it's about midnight, and we've reached that magical 202 degrees Fahrenheit internal. Now this is the first time opening up this smoker in 14 hours. Remember that Goldies will get this done at higher temps and they'll get it done a whole lot quicker. Now we need to double check that temperature with a good instant thermometer like the Thermapin. And more importantly, we're gonna see how that probe slips in and out in multiple spots. Now there's always gonna be some judgment involved because the brisket temp is never exactly the same in every spot on that brisket. If your brisket wiggles like jello and it probes like butter, it's done. Now it needs to come off the pit so we can wrap it up in foil. So I'm using my Mr. Barbecue stainless steel oversized spatula with the folding handle. Moving a hot brisket that's this tender, it'd be an absolute nightmare without this kind of spatula. I'll leave an Amazon link down below in the video description if you're interested. These are only around 10 bucks and they are worth every dollar. One disclaimer, if you buy using my link, I'll make a small commission, but the price is the same whether you use my link or not. It just helps the channel out a little bit and that spatula works very, very well. This started out as a 20 pound brisket and it's still heavy, but this big spatula got the job done. Now at one time Goldie's was known to wrap in butcher paper, but now they use one sheet of heavy duty foil. And Johnny White has mentioned that it's a lot less messy. So if you're locked into butcher paper, then I don't think it'd be a major deviation. But today I have used the foil. Now there at Goldie's, they use just enough foil to do the job because they're used to it and everything is uniform. Their briskets are normally pretty close to the same size, but feel free to use more if you want to. I know I did. Add a half cup of beef tallow onto the foil right where you plan on placing that deckle into the brisket. That's the big end. And place the brisket meat side down on that foil. I'm using tallow that I previously rendered but you can purchase tallow on Amazon if you don't want to make it yourself. Now fold the two ends of the foil toward each other and then do the sides. Now Goldie's holds those briskets at 140 for like 12 to 14 hours. And some people seem to believe there's some magic that happens at a 14 hour hold. But Johnny has said publicly that all you need to do is cool it down to 140 and then it's ready to slice. He said nothing else is going good is gonna happen to it after that. He doesn't believe that the longer hold helps it, but he's in the restaurant business. He has to hold it long, and a lot of restaurants use these long hold times. Goldie's uses commercial warming racks designed to hold food at a specific temperature. And I have my Easy Bake Oven, which is actually a Cook Shack AmeriQ electric smoker. And it's also perfect for holding food at a specific temp. I'm putting this brisket in the Cook Shack with the 145 degree set point. I don't want the temperature to fall below 140 degrees Fahrenheit because that's out of the USDA food safe range. Guys, it's way after midnight, so I'm going to bed. Okay, I got some sleep, and now I need to finish up this brisket video, and then I'm gonna be starting on some ribs, but that's another video. Now, once that brisket's out of the Easy Bake, then unwrap it and check that temperature. Now, it looks like my brisket's still a few degrees too warm, so I'm just gonna give it a little more resting time right here on the board. And when it's down to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll gently slide it off that foil and then carefully pour up the au jus into a suitable container. And that juice is gonna travel wherever this brisket goes, it goes. Since this brisket is for my family, like I said before, I'm not gonna be slicing it up totally at this time. I wanna keep it mainly intact so it'll reheat better, present better. So it's gonna be sliced on location. That being said, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna cut it. I will be cutting it right where that flattened point converge. Now it looks very juicy and gosh, it's fork tender. There's quite a bit of fat right here though where I cut it. Now normally I separate that point from the flat and I remove the unwanted seam fat. I'm sure this is not a practical way to slice up for a barbecue business, but it works for me. Once I separate the flat from the point, I can easily cut across the grain, and then I can remove that excess fat from the middle. 
today, just a couple of slices from the middle. I was hoping to show you a much more predominant smoke ring, but you'll just have to take my word that it looked a lot better once I sliced up that whole brisket. Just so you know, I did make that trip and that Goldie's brisket method was a great big hit with the family. Now this is a great way to cook your brisket if you're not in a big, big hurry. And the cook time for me was about 14 hours and that didn't count the time in the easy bake. Now, if you found something in this video that helps you out, then please hit that like button because that'll help me out. Now, even better, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you next time at Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. <laughs>